Hi everybody, I'm Lisa from Fly Goat Farm, and today I wanted to talk about sock blanks. We've been having this in our um, booth, and people are very confused about them, um, so I thought it'd be great to talk about sock blanks, what they are, how they're made, what they're going to look like at the end after you knit them up, and just how can you knit them. And maybe some of you will respond and tell me a different name that we could call them because sock blank um, doesn't really make all that much sense for the buyer. It makes sense for me as a dyer, um, but not for the buyer. So maybe you can help me think of some names. I'm going to turn the phone, the, um, the video around and uh, we'll get started. So here we are. Here is um, one of my sock blanks and my favorite cup of tea constant comment it's been one of my favorites for since i was a kid and i thought it would be perfect to have some tea and talk about knitting sock blanks i'm going to open it up on our tag we do have instructions about how to use them um, and we'll be talking about that so let me undo this i had one customer say oh i thought these were socks and when I opened it up, it looks like a dish rag. That was kind of disconcerting, um, but you know, it is what it is. So here is the sock blank. It's kind of hard to show you the whole thing. This is kind of like a double helix kind of idea with some speckling, some splotching across it. There's some dark areas, light areas in both the blues and the pinks. So what is a sock blank? It is a piece of material that has already been knit. And it is meant to be undone and re-knit into something else. You can make it into socks. You can make it into a shawl. A lot of times if you see those balls that are gradient balls, they have started out this way as a sock blank and then the dyer has um, undone them and put them into a center pull ball for you already um, just to let you know about that so how are they made here is a blank one this is one of the ones that i made they are knit on a knitting machine the ones that i made i made them double that means that I use two threads in every stitch. And so in this, there should be, there's, it's about three and a half um, ounces. It's about 400 yards. So there should, if you're gonna make socks, there should be enough for a, an entire pair of socks. And this is what it looks like before it gets dyed. Um, there is, just like in any knitting, there is a live end and a not live end. This one, if you see if you pull it, it's not gonna come undone. This is where I started knitting, this is my cast on. So you have to go to the other side of the knitting. And let me find where it, it, it is. And you are going to find that there is a live end here that when you pull it, let me get this together okay so when you pull it it is going to come unknit and sometimes at the edges you have a little catching there I don't know why exactly but this one has a little catch in there but it's going to be unknit like that and then that's that's where you're going to start your knitting and work your way down the sock blank um, you can find these in doubles like what I have here, which is two threads done together. Or you can find them in singles where you just have one thread. The fa fabric is going to obviously look much finer um, on those ones that are just singles rather than, than the doubles. All right. So what is it going to look like when I knit it? Well, first of all, I'm going to say it's not going to look like this. You're not going to have, because you, because you're knitting something that's a different um, width, it's not going to have the same pattern. So here is this end. This is the live end here. And I can show you, I've undone part of it. 
And I can show you what you're gonna get is gonna look like Spreckles, can you see that? And you're getting, if you knit socks, you're gonna get socks that are similar, pretty similar between the two. Um, but you're not gonna, it's not gonna look like the picture that is on, that is painted on the sock blank itself. Now, if you get one that is more of a gradient, here's one that's more of a gradient or a striping pattern, you are going to get stripes in your socks. This is my live end. You are going to get these stripes because they're nice and big. And so you are going to get stripes, but in your socks, they're going to be looking a little different. And also where these darker and lighter parts are, you're going to have more like spreckling and some, some interesting color variations in that part. Now, I did talk about how do you use it. And this one I am knitting up myself. Hopefully I'm not getting anybody too um, seasick. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to move this out of the way, is I am making a pair of socks. I'm knitting two socks at a time from the top down, and I'm using one very long circular needle to do that. So when I started this, it was in the uh, kind of a lighter golden yellowy orange area. And you can see that there are spreckles in there. There's some lighter parts and some darker parts. And then there was an area where I was gonna be transitioning into the pink. And because it was um, the line, it doesn't go exactly along the, um, the, the knit stitches, then I'm gonna get some interesting striping here where the colors are changing. Isn't that cool? I think it's really pretty. You're gonna, your socks are gonna be mostly the same if you do it in this way, although there is some variation. Here's the other one, um, so putting them side by side. They look, they look pretty similar. They have the same kind of, you know, it's starting the same way with the spreckles and the light and dark. Here in this area, I'm getting some striping as well. Um, it's a little, it's not the same striping pattern, but it's close. To the same. Now, if you are going to, if you don't want to do two socks at the same time, then what you're going to be doing is as you're knitting one sock, then the other sock you're going to make into a ball, wind it up and make it into a ball. And then you can go back and knit the other sock. If you want them to look exactly the same, you'd have to reball this because this is the start and when, you know, as you're working and working your way down the sock blank, um, the outer part is gonna be at the end of the sock rather than the beginning of the sock. So if you wanted them to look exactly the same, what you're gonna have to do is reball this so that you can get to the beginning thread. I hope that makes sense. So if you're doing one sock at a time, then you would do the second one, the second thread into a ball, and then reball it to make sure that you can start at the beginning again. But if you're going to do a shawl, it would be very cool, especially if you have a gradient like this one. If you um, reball the second, you know, this the second yarn, you reball it, and so you knit all the way down to the end. And you're reballing your second um, uh, thread the whole time, and then you keep, and then it's going to go back this way. You're not going to break your yarn. You're not going to change anything. You're just going to knit all the way down and then all the way back, and you would get a really neat um, symmetrical pattern that way. It'd be really a great shawl for that. And I would suggest doing stripes. For that or doing a gradient for that, that would be the best kind of um, sock blank to get. Now I had um, one woman come up to me at Vogue Knitting Live and she said, I can't do that. I can't undo knitting. I don't want to. I hate it when I have to redo my knitting. I don't want to do it. Um, 
So why would people want to do, to work with these soft blanks? And I think for me, I think that it is because it is a mysterious, it's a mysterious process. You don't know exactly what is going to turn out to be, especially if you have something that has some kind of a uh, printed pattern on it, maybe an image. I heard um, one person bought one that had um, words on it. And so it would be kind of like a secret message that only she would know in her socks. Um, but it is, it would be, it's because it's a mystery. It's because it's fun. Um, and you get surprises all along the way. I can tell you when I was knitting these, um, I kept wanting to go further and further. It was pushing me to knit more and more because I wanted to see, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? And I think that's the fun part about these sock blanks. So the next time that I see you, um, if I see you at a uh, fiber festival or a trunk show or a yarn show, come and look at our fun sock blanks and consider buying one and making something mysterious and wonderful uh, all of your own. Until next time, happy making.